to Dielectric Videos. Now, a few episodes ago, you probably recall I was working on my hoverboard, and in my last video regarding hoverboards, well, rather the one before that, I did a teardown to show you what was inside, and I did a temporary modification of the battery mounting bracket to make sure that uh, the battery didn't continue to wear down and potentially short out. Now I've unscrewed this uh, cover of the battery frame here, and as you can see, the bracket is once again loose. And in fact, it's gotten so loose that uh, the battery has knocked these wires almost flat. So I'm going to take these screws out, and uh, in today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to install a modified bracket, which I've constructed out of sheet metal. Now I didn't show how to actually assemble this, uh, as that would have made the video considerably more lengthy. However, it's not particularly challenging. Um, it's, you can use some really light, uh, light gauge metal, bend it into the same shape as the original bracket, and drill the appropriate holes. Just be sure, being sure also to uh, insulate and protect the sides against uh, damage, since this is a high vibration environment. Now, additionally, you'll notice I have a spare battery here. My original battery, I've put roughly 200 charge cycles on it, and it's gotten down to about maybe 60% of the original distance that it was capable of, uh, of covering uh, on a single charge. So I think it's probably a good time to consider replacing it. Uh, the replacement battery is rated as a 4.4 amp hour, 42 volt pack. It's the same voltage, should have its own internal battery management system, I hope, and it should have the same cable connector as the original. So I'm going to continue by uh, removing the existing battery bracket, which has uh, worked itself loose and broken free. Uh, the new metal bracket should be significantly more robust than the old one, than the old plastic one. And uh, I'm also going to be placing a piece of rubber underneath it so that it doesn't uh, have any chance of short circuiting against the battery if the plastic casing on the battery wears through. Because as I've determined in the previous video, the cells are, uh, are bare underneath this plastic. So if the plastic wears all the way down, the cells will in fact be exposed. Now I've just taken the last screw out for the existing battery mount. So I'm going to lift, kind of get the wires out of the way. And here's the old battery mount. Now as you can see on here, the uh, screws have completely sheared off and the washers that I used earlier to try to extend the life of this bracket uh, simply kind of wore the holes even, even larger and it ultimately broke loose again. Now I'm hoping that because this is made out of galvanized steel, it should have a better chance at surviving in the long term. Uh, the holes are drilled straight through the metal and this should hopefully uh, allow the battery to uh, not vibrate around as much, which ultimately not only improves its lifespan, but also reduces the chances of it catching fire as a result of mechanical abrasion to the outer jacket. Now I've disconnected the battery terminal here and I should just be able to slide it out. Now you can see this one has already gotten a bit worn out since the last time I repaired it with this electrical tape. So I'll set this one aside and now I'm going to work on reinstalling this fresh battery here. Now the only difference I've noticed is the uh, wiring does come out of a different point within the battery. Uh, this one comes out on this side, the original came out on the opposite side, but it should still hopefully reach its destination. I'm going to insert it into the container, uh, containment area here. And if I can make it reach, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it does look like it fits. Now, before I seal anything up, just to make sure everything's working nicely, I'm going to press the power button. And the board does turn on, so that tells me that the voltage is correct and uh, there's no issue currently with the connection to the battery. Now I turned it off. Now I'm going to tuck the mount back into the center uh, channel hole here to make sure it's uh, well protected from vibration. And the next thing I'm going to do is install this metal bracket. So now I've gotten the new battery mounting bracket in place with the rubber uh, protection seal underneath it. I've got the holes lined up with the uh, location of the screws. Now I'm going to proceed to mount the new screws or the, the screws into the new holes mounted on there.
suppose my only concern would be these cables here. In fact, yeah, I may have to do something about that. My Hall Effect cables appear to be getting uh, compressed under this, uh, under this plate. So I'll get back to you in a second once I've come up with a solution for this problem here. So I've come to a solution to this problem with the uh, plate rubbing against the Hall Effect sense wires. I've cut a small slot underneath uh, the plastic in this uh, pedal pressure sensor and that should allow these wires to pass safely without applying too much pressure to the adjacent metal strip. Now the foam layer attached on each side should also provide a good deal of protection, but I definitely wanted to make sure that these wires weren't under pressure in contact with the sheet metal, because uh, if sheet metal can cut my hand as easily as it did when I was uh, working on it, it can definitely cut through the insulation of wiring. So now I'm going to uh, proceed to put this thing back together. All right, the board is now secure. All I need to do now are put the screws back in. So I'm going to start with the outermost screws, which are the ones that penetrate into the plastic. Now that all the screws are back in, I think it's time to take this out for a test drive and see how it performs. All right, I'm out at the testing area. Now I've uh, ridden this uh, about 500 feet to get here and the performance has been extremely good. I've had no problems with uh, stuttering or any other signs of battery issues. I've gone over some fairly intense bumps and I've brought this thing up to full speed and had no problems with it. I mean, check it out. I got it up to the beep speed and everything and it's performing absolutely fantastically. Now uh, I'm going to try and do some more advanced uh, maneuvers to see if the, uh, if the uh, ampacity is high enough to keep this thing going. So let's see if I can uh, do some more advanced rotational spins put some extra load on these motors. I want to get all 500 watts out of both of them at the same time. And that feels pretty good. I'm also going to go over some bumpy surfaces to try to uh, get the connection to fail if it's going to. So here goes. I'm also noticing it's significantly smoother now that the new battery mount's been installed. With the old battery mount, I would physically feel the battery rattle around inside the board, which uh, can't be good for it. But uh, now it's way smoother and the performance is uh, pretty excellent. So I'm going to say this is a successful operation. The new battery has been installed and uh, the new battery seems to be performing better. So I'll take it out tonight and see if I get better uh, range than I did before, the other before I had the other battery. And if I do have better range, I'll know for certain that the uh, culprit was the battery wearing out. Now it is possible that my uh, lack of range is a result of the motors getting older and less efficient. And that would definitely come to, uh, come to be the case if my uh, range is still not good even with the new battery. But if the range is better, it'll be obvious that it was just normal wear and tear on the original cell or the original uh, pack. So thank you for watching Dielectric Videos. I will see you next time.